All right, YouTube, today we're talking about the centroid and center of gravity of this assembly of objects. Now, strictly speaking, centroid, which is a center of area, is different from a center of mass. So we're gonna make the assumption that both of these objects are made of the same material and have the same mass per unit area, but I'll show you along the way how this would vary if these were made from different materials, say one was styrofoam and the other was lead. Now, in this problem, we're only dealing with two different objects. But anytime I'm doing a center of mass or centroid problem, I like to set up a table just to keep all the information organized. So we're gonna work out the area, horizontal position, and vertical position for each of these objects. So looking first at the block, we'll start with the area. If this is just a rectangle, we know the area is given by the base multiplied by the height. That's gonna be six. And next is the position of the block. Now, anytime we're dealing with a, a centroid or center of gravity problem, we have to have some origin or some reference point. What I choose to do typically is say the lower left corner of all the objects in the problem is the position we're gonna call zero, zero. That is zero horizontally and zero vertically. Now the center of mass or center of area of this block is going to lie right in the middle of the block, both horizontally and vertically. So we can say the horizontal position of the middle of this block is at a position not of two, but of one, that is half the width of the block. Now vertically, the center of area or center of mass of this block is going to be halfway up the block. So that's gonna be three over two, that's 1.5. Now moving on to this triangle, things get a little bit trickier. See, the center of area or center of mass of this triangle does not lie halfway between the left and the right side of this triangle. If we were to divide this triangle in half right here, you'll see there's much more material over here on the left side than there is over on the right side. But it can be derived that the center of mass or center of area of a triangle lies one third of the distance between this long edge and the point of the triangle, right along this axis. Now, if you wanna see the derivation to prove the center of mass is one third from this long edge of the triangle, just click up here. Now, going back to filling out our table, the area of this triangle isn't too difficult. It's simply one half base times height. That's gonna be an area of two. But when it comes to the position, people start to run into trouble. You see, the center of mass of this triangle is one third of the base of the triangle away from the left edge. It's gonna be one third times two. So the horizontal distance from the corner of this triangle to the center of mass or center of area is going to be two thirds or 0.66. Now the temptation is to put in 0.66 right here, but realize, we're measuring the center of this triangle relative to our origin. And the center of this triangle horizontally is not 0.66 away, but it's going to be two plus 0.66. Now vertically, the center of mass or center of area of this triangle is going to be one third of the height of the triangle. And that's gonna be one third of two, which is again, 0.66. Now I realize I keep treating center of area and center of mass as though they're the same thing. But if we were strictly solving for center of mass and these were made of two completely different materials, rather than having areas listed here, we would simply be putting in the individual masses of our two different objects. But now that we've worked out the area, horizontal and vertical positions of both of our objects, now we can take a look at our equation for the center of area or centroid of these blocks. Now sometimes you'll see the equation for centroid or even center of mass listed looking something like this, which is just complete utter crap. This is useless to people. So we're gonna pretend that doesn't exist. I'm gonna write this out a little bit different way. Now this is our equation for center of area. Realize if we were talking about center of mass, we'd have our masses in our table and we'd simply exchange these areas for masses. Now the way I've written this equation, this gives us the center of area horizontally or within the x-axis 
If we were to put in our Y values for our objects, it would give us the centroid or center of area vertically. So plugging in our values from the table into the equation, looking first at the rectangle, this has an area of six, a horizontal position of one, plus the area of the triangle, that's two, multiplied by its horizontal position, 2.66. And then in the denominator, we have the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. And we find horizontally the center of area of this assembly is 1.415 away from this point right here. So we know horizontally the center of area lies along this line. Now let's solve for the center of area vertically. To do that, we're gonna use the same center of area equation again, except now rather than plugging in the horizontal positions, we're gonna plug in the vertical positions. And we find vertically the center of area is 1.29 above this reference point. So graphically our center of area lies right here. Now there's one cool thing I wanna point out about the center of area of this entire assembly that might not be immediately obvious. So if we were to draw a line from the center of area of the rectangle to the center of area of the triangle, the center of area of the entire assembly lies along that line. Now while this isn't mind blowing, what this does is confirm that we've done this problem correctly. See, anytime we have only two objects and we're working out either their center of area or center of mass, the total center of area is gonna lie on a line between those two objects. So I hope you found this useful in solving for either the center of area or center of mass of an assembly of objects. And on that note, that's all for now.